They're calling it a child care staffing crisis. Many daycare centers are short staffed. Reporter Sonia Gowen shows us how a Crystal Daycare Center is dealing with that staffing shortage. We're trying to send all these toddlers down for a nap so they can re-energize and turn into the absolute tornadoes that toddlers are. Little Folks Daycare in Crystal has been cultivating young minds since 1980. Okay, line up. Just juggling different kids than we normally have. But the child care center is feeling the effects of a nationwide staffing crunch firsthand. Child care is already a challenge and now we have a new challenge this week. Well, lay down, Georgia. Steph Hanna is the owner and director. She says staffing levels fluctuate from day to day and says the Crystal Daycare Center was down 25% of its workers on Tuesday because of COVID. I'm covering one of our positive cases, one of our staff that's out um, this week. Um, she's already boosted and still tested positive. For now, teachers are rotating from room to room, covering where needed. We have an amazing staff, so they've been super helpful, and everybody's just being flexible and helping out where they need to. A recent survey of more than 7,500 child care centers across the country found worker shortages in nearly every state, with some as high as 90%. It's the reality we're living in right now. Meanwhile, Little Folks Daycare officials want better guidance from the state when it comes to quarantine restrictions. We're licensed by the state of Minnesota, and the Department of Health hasn't changed their guidelines for daycares quite yet, so we're still under a 10-day quarantine. In Crystal, Sonia Goins, CCX News. With New Year's resolutions in full force, this time of year continues to be a busy time for people involved in the health and wellness field. There's so much information out there, so this week we sat down with Melissa Yeager, a registered dietitian from hy V, to learn how to get started on your health and wellness journey. All right, we are here with Melissa Yeager, registered dietitian with hy V. You're a popular person this time of year. How busy are you? <laughs> yes, we are. Things are definitely picking up because everybody's got health and wellness at top of mind at the new year. What are some of the popular questions you get? One of the biggest questions I always get is just, where do I get started? How can I build a more balanced plate or meal? And I think it's important to remember to kind of take it back to the basics and how can we incorporate all food groups at a meal time? So if you're envisioning your dinner plate right now, Think about it and plan to have half of it be fruits or vegetables. And I know that that may seem like a stretch for some of our meal times, or maybe that's something we're not used to, but maybe that's part of our goal setting for this year because those fruits and vegetables provide tons of fiber to help keep you full longer. And it also gives us essential vitamins and minerals. And then take the other half of your plate and split it between whole grains and lean quality protein sources. And you've got yourself a really balanced plate with perhaps a serving of dairy or whatever your choice of calcium and vitamin D is in your diet. If you're considering one of these lifestyle eating plans like vegetarian, keto, Whole30, what should you consider going into something like that? Before you get started with a diet plan, you need to take into consideration your personal needs versus the needs of everyone around you. Because just because a diet worked for your neighbor, your family member, your friend, it may not be what works best for you in your body. And it needs to be a diet that you feel that you can sustain long term. So in general, I try and encourage individuals to reach out to their local dietitian and determine what's going to be the best course of action for themselves. How can they still incorporate all the foods that they love and they know that they're willing to eat in a way that's healthful and making sure that they're still meeting their dietary allowances for the day? What about as I go through the aisles and I see sugar-free, fat-free, reduced fat? What should I know about those There are foods? so many label claims out there, aren't there? And it is, it's a little bit tricky to navigate. And so if you're really starting to look into label reading, just because claims on the front of the packages might say sugar-free, you need to take a look at the actual nutrition facts label or the ingredients list. Oftentimes they've added in additional artificial sweeteners or perhaps even additional fat or sodium to retain that flavor that you know and love while trying to cut back on some of the sugar. Sugar. And so if you're really questioning some of those nutrition facts labels or you just want more help practicing with those, that's where something like our virtual nutrition store tours comes into play. We offer complimentary store tours to teach you what are the best items to put in your cart and how to utilize them at home and how to practice label reading. And you have a few other um, virtual events coming up as well. Can you tell us about those? We do. New in January, we're offering our Wellness Wednesday series. And so each Wednesday over the lunch hour from 12 to 1230, we're going to cover some different topics led by a registered dietitian. You can interact, ask questions, but it's a nice way to learn about, you know, simple things like how to build that balanced plate or different easy packable lunch ideas for the new year, or even how to enjoy happy hour with health in mind. So each week those topics will change and that'll continue past January. So you can always find out more information at hyvie.com backslash health. 
All right, lots to consider. Melissa Yeager, registered dietitian with hy V. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Calling All Cat Lovers, a unique business that brings together coffee and cats, is coming to New Hope. CCX reporter Jason Malillo checked out the other location to see if it really is the cat's meow. If you love coffee and cats, Cafe Meow is the place to be. The cat lounge definitely has a therapy aspect to it. Customers can enjoy their favorite drink while hanging out with feline friends. With um, the pandemic, we've had many people come in and say that this just really offered them that type of space where they could relax and unwind. Cafe Meow opened its Hennepin Avenue location in 2018. The concept's always been based around helping more cats get into homes. So far, nearly 500 cats have been adopted through the efforts of Cafe Meow and its rescue partners. This assured the fact that like I enjoy interacting with cats because like I've been around like my friends' cats, but I feel like this is a really it's a really good like tester if you want to get a cat. But owner Jessica Burge says Cafe Meow is outgrowing its current space in Minneapolis. People come in on weekends and they want to get into the cat lounge and we have to turn them away. So they're opening a second location. Northwest suburbs were kind of where we wanted to be. They will plan to open Cafe Meow in the Winnetka Commons in New Hope this spring. Burge says the layout was perfect and it's twice as big as the Minneapolis location. It's a larger space for more people to be able to visit at a time. Jason Melillo, CCX News. It's pretty common for high school hockey players who want to play college hockey to play junior hockey first. Some even do that as high school seniors. In this week's CCX Sports Spotlight, we meet an Osseo high school senior who has really gone the distance this season. Trey Hoffman has been a hockey goalie for about as long as he can remember. Back in the uh, uh, might, we would, you know, switch off playing goalies, so... I got the chance to be a goalie and I really liked it and I kind of stuck with it and you know uh, I think another thing too is when I would uh, watch uh, NHL games when I was younger I would always see the goalies making these saves and you know how we win those cool masks and I was like you know I want to be a goalie when I get older. <laughs> and so the journey began up through youth hockey and the Osseo Maple Grove Association and eventually to Osseo High School. But after not getting a varsity start a year ago as a junior and with the ultimate goal of playing college hockey, Trey decided to try something else this season. My uh, goalie coach Carl Popper, you know, he's like, hey, you know, we got an opportunity here for you. And he's like, would you possibly want to go play in Sweden? I was like, Sweden, okay. He did think about it, and then having never traveled on an airplane anywhere, took the plunge and headed to Sweden in late September. Trey plays for the Nybro Vikings age 18 team in the Swedish Junior League. As the only goalie on the roster, Trey is getting every start, 19 in all so far. And it's a different style of game and skaters he's facing. They usually play physical over here in North America, but over in Sweden it's not as physical, but very skillful. Uh, the shots are uh, a lot higher quality, I would say. You know, they usually like to pick top corners a lot or uh, try to get that backdoor play on you. Trey is the only player from the United States on the Vikings and one of just two North Americans. So there is a bit of a language barrier with his teammates. Still, he's enjoyed the experience. I will say the first week was a little rough, but otherwise than that, you know, I was just like, you know, this isn't bad. You know, as long as I'm playing hockey here, you know, I'm all good. Outside of hockey, Trey stays busy with schoolwork from Osseo. Having done online schooling all of last year during the pandemic makes it easier. Experiencing it for uh, pretty much a whole year, you know, and uh, knowing kind of, okay, well, this is what's going to be like, you know, online meetings and like that, you know, homework by yourself, you know, that's, that's fine. The season in Sweden runs through mid-March, and then Trey will come back home and graduate with his classmates at Osseo in the spring. As for next year in hockey, who's to say? The nice thing for me is that the doors are still, uh, I think I've widened up, widened up even more for me, you know. Playing over in Sweden, you know, if it doesn't work out over here in North America, I can always go back to Sweden and, you know, if something does happen over here in North America, I can come back here. After a couple of weeks home for the holidays, Trey is back in Nybro for the rest of the season. The Providence Academy boys hockey team climbed into the top 10 rankings in Class A this season, and the Lions right now are on a roll. 
Jason Malolo has highlights from their latest win. 10-2 Providence hosting Monticello. First period, Jack Anderson gets the puck in front. Sammy Lewis snaps it home, 1-0 Lions. Providence junior Andrew Owen can fly. He beats the defenders and scores for a 2-0 lead. The Moose get one back. Wilson Dahlheimer makes a pass from his knees to Roman Thompson for the one-timer, cutting the lead in half. Second period, Johnny Hendrickson, nice move to split the defenders, and then he picks the top corner for a 3-1 Providence lead. The Lions add another as Lewis Wayman sets up Sammy Lewis for his second marker of the game. Evan Villa Gomez stops 17 of 18 shots, and Providence runs its record to 11-2. Jason Malillo, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jason. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.